Good afternoon, everyone. This is Joe Malash, superintendent of the Cherry Hill Public School District. Thank you for joining us for the March edition of Online Lunch with the superintendent. I'm the very proud superintendent of the Cherry Hill Public School District, and I'm very excited to welcome back with me today Mrs. Faith Holmgren, who is our teacher coordinator. Uh, we're going to have some discussion about the annual park assessment, what we do with that information, how it works, and what it looks like in our school district. But before we start, I do want to say um, that we were notified a little bit earlier today uh, about another school shooting uh, in Great Mills, at Great Mills High School uh, on the eastern shore of Maryland. Uh, folks, we have spent so much time uh, over the last month very formally um, and very passionately in, in meetings and discussions and emails talking about school safety and school security. Um, it's, in, it's in, in incredibly scary for all of us uh, to think that these things continue to happen. Uh, I encourage you, talk with your children, talk with one another uh, about safety and security in your homes and in our schools and in our community. I invite you to continue to come out and be part of our discussions at the Board of Education meetings. We have scheduled evenings just to focus purely on discussions about safety and security. So I encourage you to be part of that discussion. As I said at the meeting last Thursday evening, we were at Beck at the middle school talking about safety and security in Cherry Hill. I am very hopeful that all of us can continue the discussion about what safety and security looks like for our children beyond the walls and the confines of our schools uh, and our district campuses. But what's it look like for our kids when they leave school, you know, from Friday afternoon until Monday morning or from Tuesday afternoon until Wednesday morning? This is a discussion that all of us as educators, as residents, as parents uh, continue to have. Again, as I said in a letter to the community a couple weeks ago, my four girls, my four daughters are the four most important people to me in the world, not even a comparison. And I'm sure for those of you who are parents and have families, it's the same thing for all of you. Um, so please um, have a positive thought for the folks at Great Mills High School, um, that the people are safe uh, and secure. Uh, and again, please keep in your focus all the time, safety and security. So I know that's a very serious way to start us out. Um, but I really am excited to welcome Faith Holmgren back with me uh, this, the, this afternoon. This is the second year in a row that Faith has joined me um, to talk about our, our testing program. Um, so Ms. Holmgren, can you just tell us a little about, uh, as we start, what is the park test? What's the park testing window? What are we looking at as we get into the end of March? So it's coming up a lot quicker than uh, we imagined. With all the snow days that we've had in between, there's less time um, that we've had to prepare this year. But um, our test administrators are ready. Um, yesterday, we actually had our formal test coordinator training here in district for all three levels. So elementary took place in the morning, middle school and high school in the afternoon. All of our test coordinators are trained, and the expectation is that they then take that information, go back to their buildings, and turn key that information to ensure that everyone at the building level is ready as well. So the testing window is coming up. It begins on April 16th. It is a window that is provided to us. Um, so it's April 16th through May 25th. Um, we will begin with our high schools. The high schools will test first. Um, it worked out really well last year. We ran a condensed schedule. Um, right. And the reason that we ran this condensed schedule is because it did not in interrupt instruction okay. as much as it had in the past. Okay. In the past, we had tested high school over six weeks and right. the amount of instruction that was interrupted during that time just was not conducive right. um, to education, to the education of our students. So um, we're running that condensed schedule again this year. Okay. Um, after high school, we will follow by middle school, um, we'll begin testing. Ms. Well, let me just ask you with the, <clears throat> with the high school condensed schedule. So um, as you go into the middle school, will all of the schools, will the principals be sending letters home about the dates, about what that looks like for the individual schools? So just so you are aware, at, in our public information broadcast last Friday, the updated schedule did go out to um, all of our parents through the public information broadcast. Um, but not that's, our, only that's our weekly newsletter, right? Weekly newsletter. If you have not signed up for the <laughs> weekly newsletter, I encourage you to go online and do so. Go online, find the public information section, and if you can't find it, in the upper right-hand corner of our website, there's that little um, magnifying glass to search. Just search, and you can sign up for our, for our, our weekly newsletter. I do a letter each week. Uh, Mrs. Wilson puts in all the pertinent information, topics, hot hot things that are going on. And as Ms. Holgren said, um, last week we sent out the updated schedule to everyone. So go in and register for our newsletter. Thank so you. So not only will we will be, be, we be providing the newsletter or um, the updated schedule and information on the district website, but on each of the school sites, That's great. you should look for a letter forthcoming from um, principals, test coordinators, test coordinators, et cetera, with the specifics about 
when testing will, will occur at each of uh, those levels. Um, so as I was mentioning, high school starts first. We right. then move on to middle school. Middle school testing begins 420, April 20th. Um, at the end of middle school testing, we will then move into elementary testing. Um, the tricky part about scheduling this year is every um, public school district in New Jersey who is involved with park testing is required to take a field test. Um, so within the last three years, every school district had to, um, you know, had have this field test as part of their sure. um, assessment calendar. And this year was our lucky year. So we have a fourth day of ELA for all three levels. Okay. Um, so it made it a little bit trickier in scheduling um, the park assessment this year. But it is written in stone and we are ready to go. And as Dr. Malash mentioned, not only look um, to the district website, but to your school's website for further information as it becomes closer. And specific questions uh, for one of the schools, contact the principal, the guidance counselor. Absolutely, contact okay. the principals. The principals are definitely in the know. All Excellent. this information is shared with them. So please contact your billing principal if there's any questions that you have about um, when testing is occurring. Great. So Ms. Hogan, so we have the kids take the assessment, right? They go through, they sit for the assessment, it gets sent off and it gets scored. What do we do as a district? Can you talk a little bit about what do, you, what do we do with the results? What's Absolutely. It so um, each year it's nice because we're getting the results a little bit sooner than we have okay. in prior years. So in August of 2017, the kids took the assessment. Spring 2017, August of 2017, we received the results. Okay. Um, one of the really nice reports that we now receive that um, include these results are the analysis reports um, tables, the evidence analysis reports. Um, basically what these reports show are all the standards and how each of our schools performed mm -hmm. on the standards. So we're able to look at this not only at the district level, but we're ab actually able to look at, at the school level as well. Um, so what we have done with that data, um, not only are we going into the schools and working with the data in the schools, but we actually gave an example to the CNI committee of the board um, to let them know here's the data that we receive after the students take the park assessment and here's what we're actually doing with that data to respond to it. Okay. So an example that I have for you, um, I went in and worked with sixth grade teachers at Beck. Um, there, there was, it was a language arts um, cohort of teachers and the first thing we did was look at these analysis charts and um, for someone who does not look at them every day, they can seem a little intimidating. So I actually broke apart all the different pieces of the analysis reports for the teachers. Um, we then identified the areas of strength, areas of weakness. Um, after we looked at those standards and identified our areas of weakness, there's a few further steps that we take beyond just looking at it, kind of what now. Um, so what we did is look at our curriculum. Um, we went into all of our curriculum maps to say, okay, where is this standard taught within our curriculum maps? Um, we identified where it was taught. We then were able to have um, a collaborative conversation and collegial conversation about ways that different teachers are using instructional styles to teach the Great. standard. Sure. So what are you doing to teach the standard in right. your English class? What are you doing to teach a standard you know, in your language arts class? So it was a great conversation. They were able to brainstorm, share different ideas. Um, and then the nice thing that Pearson does is they release the questions based upon that are linked to the standards from prior year's tests. That's great. So we were actually able to then log on to last year's assessment, 2017, to mm -hmm. say, okay, so this standard is linked to this question, and what does that question look like? And how am I incorporating that type of questioning on a daily basis right. in my instruction? Right. You know, are my students familiar with responding to a question that causes them to analyze and to think a little bit more critically, right. or are they used to responding to very basic um, right. respond, you know, right there questions? Sure. So um, it was a great conversation. It causes not only the teachers to think instructionally about what they're doing daily in their classrooms, but it also causes them to think about how the students are responding to the questions that they ask. That's great. So it's a it's that ongoing cycle of improvement Absolutely. for students and for staff. The discussions continue and it impacts instruction and teachers work collegially. Absolutely. That's great. Not only occurs for language arts, um, but then we also um, do the same for math. And right. it's math. very helpful to have the colleague teachers for mathematics sure. provide me with, you know, a little support and feedback right. um, as they're working, you know, so heavily with the curriculum. That's great. Great discussion. Mm -hmm. Ms. Hogan, tell us a little bit about the new science assessment. Um, so we, before it had been a different test and a different assessment and it's brand new this, this spring. So prior to this spring, um, the students took the NJ-ASK assessment mm -hmm. or NJ-BCT. So NJ-ASK took place 
in grades four and eight and JBCT took place for any students who were enrolled in a biology course. Right. Um, that has changed for this year. Um, there's a couple benefits to it. One of the benefits that I see is that the students will be taking the test no longer in paper-based format. They will be taking the test in an online setting. Okay. Um, the nice thing about it is they will be testing in the same platform that they use to test in park. Okay. So they will be familiar with what it looks like. They will know how to use the tools within the technology platform. Um, and there are a few changes that are taking place. So we're no longer testing fourth grade students. Fifth grade students will be tested. Um, and for high school, it's no longer based upon if you are enrolled in the bio class, it's now all grade 11 students. Okay. So there are a few changes that are taking place. Um, information is still forthcoming regarding this assessment. So as we get closer to it, you will be hearing from both myself as well as our um, science uh, curriculum supervisor regarding um, specific dates and, and, and so forth. Excellent. I'll have to get Mr. Goldthorpe, who's the science curriculum supervisor, to join us at some point, right? I don't Absolutely. know that he has made an appearance at online lunch. Uh, folks, as, as you are joining us, uh, if you are joining us live, uh, and today is Tuesday, March the 20th, so if you are currently watching us live, if you have questions as Mrs. Holmgren and I are speaking, you can certainly put them in. If you are watching us on YouTube, you can type in the question right there on the screen. Uh, Mrs. Wilson, our public information officer, as always, is here in the room with me, uh, as is Mr. Bart, our director of operations. But you can submit questions either about the, the park assessment and the discussion Mrs. Holmgren and I are having or about any other topics as well. So please feel free to submit some questions. Um, can you tell us a little bit about new testing, um, the, the new testing office? Like how are you organizing information uh, as for the district? There's a lot of teachers um, that we have, right? Almost a thousand certificated staff member, uh, 18 different buildings that are actually testing. How do you keep all that together? So as you are aware, there's a lot of um, paperwork and there's a lot of sign-in sheets mm -hmm. that come across my desk on a daily basis. <laughs> and so in an effort to um, go green and to be a little bit more environmentally friendly, yeah. but also more efficient in the way that we operate um, out of the assessment office, we've created a Google Classroom. Um, I have to tell you, I'm new to this and um, I'm learning on a daily basis. There are several of my colleagues within the district who are um, avid Google Classroom users. So I've been getting a lot of help along the way. Um, but I've gotten a lot of positive feedback so far. So everything that we do, we're trying to do electronically. Um, any signatures that are required, they're being pushed out electronically, received electronically. And so this is the first year and we're all new to it. So I want everyone to know that I'm learning along with them. That's great. Uh, I think that makes it a little bit more comfortable and, right. uh, and exciting. That's really nice. So yeah. again, moving the adults forward as the kids are, we're asking the kids to do this in classrooms Absolutely. and what they're doing. So all pertinent information, well. just as the parents want all the pertinent information provided to them sure. in order to make sure it gets to them, I need to make sure it gets to the teachers and to the buildings in an efficient manner. And so that yeah. was kind of the basis of creating this um, dual classroom. That's great. Uh, Ms. Summer, any last minute things? So as, as we all get ready for our kids, as, as my daughter gets ready at the high school or the elementary middle school, um, what are some, some reminders for parents? What, what else can they do at home as the kids get ready to take the assessment? So first and foremost, I think um, getting your kids to bed in a timely manner, getting them to bed on time, yes. and I know that can be difficult in my yes. house, it's a <laughs> nightly struggle, um, getting them to bed on time and then getting them healthy breakfast in the morning, okay. um, just making sure that their minds are ready to go. One thing that I wanna mention that this is not an assessment that you can necessarily study for. So our students are being prepared um, not only in the grade that they're in right now to take the assessment, but this preparation starts when they enter our building sure. as kindergartners. Um, so there's no study or prep work that needs to be done ahead of time. Um, one thing that I do want to mention is that um, there is a very strict cell phone or electronic okay. device policy. So um, please be sure you pay special attention to that when that information comes from each sure. of your buildings um, regarding um, the use of any kind of technology tool, Apple Watches, mm -hmm. cell phones, etc. They will not allow to be inside the testing setting okay. um, with students. Um, just for test security purposes, and this mandate comes down to our district from uh, the DOE okay. um, for our training. So um, please look for my weekly updates that um, Barbara will send out, and thank Excellent. you for having me today. And again, if you haven't signed up for our newsletter, go online and sign up for our newsletter. Because not only do you get to see a letter from me and the other things that are going on, this is Holmgren. We'll have updates as we go through the park season, which in and of itself is enough of a reason to sign up for the newsletter. Uh, Ms. Holmgren, thanks for coming in. It's great thank to see you. Thank you so much. You. Have a great rest of the Take day. Take care. Be well. Thank you. Thank you. Listen, you'll tell Mr. Goldthorpe that... Uh, I will. I will. He's next. That's right. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. So again, today is Tuesday, March the 20th. 
Um, and while we are getting ready to celebrate the beginning of spring, uh, in fact, I know people were excited. You know, some of the local uh, uh, water ice establishments I know give out a free water ice today. Uh, as I look out to my left uh, out the window and I see the snow flurries and a little bit of sleet coming through, um, you know, we are anticipating quite a bit of, of weather um, to come through over the course of the next 24 hours. Um, again, you know, when we make decisions about inclement weather and whether schools will be opened or closed, uh, all that information is contained within our website. Um, we do try to make a decision as early as possible. Uh, we will not make calls or send anything out after 10 p.m. Uh, in the evening or before 5, um, 5.45 a.m. in the morning. Uh, but we will look to see where it is. Think warm thoughts, think dry thoughts. Uh, we are excited about springtime um, and hopefully we can move forward <laughs> towards springtime. Behind me on the wall, as you look over my shoulders, uh, is our work from some of our um, student artists from Cherry Hill High School West. Uh, again, each month we do a rotation of, uh, of art here in the building. When we have the, the students from High School East and High School West uh, presenting their materials, uh, it actually expands into the hallway because of the volume uh, of work that's done uh, at both of the high schools. There are some, there's some 3D art, uh, as well as the, the pictures and the drawings and the paintings on the wall behind me and in the hallway. Uh, so thanks to the, the High School uh, West teachers uh, and student artists that have shared their information. Uh, I do have a few questions that have come through ahead of time. Uh, again, if you have questions that you would like to have me answer, you know, certainly can, if you're on YouTube, you can submit them through uh, the YouTube channel. You can email public information uh, as well. So the first question actually deals with weather. and says, it looks like we're in for a lot of snow by tomorrow. Uh, I noticed we are out of scheduled makeup days on the district calendar. If schools are closed, when will the makeup day be? Um, so with the number of inclement weather days, we are out of uh, additional days to use during the, during the course of the year. So we will add the day on to the end of the year. As of today, the last day of school is Wednesday, June the 20th. If we are closed, for, if school is closed tomorrow, then the last day of school will now be um, Thursday, June the 21st. You know, so any days that we are closed will be added on to the end of the academic year. Um, okay. The next, I received the district's e weekly e-newsletter a couple of times this winter after all the talk about increased security. How can I keep getting it? Um, so we did, you know, the, over the couple of weeks in March, um, I had Mrs. Wilson push out my letters um, to all the families in the district that we have email addresses for um, through our parent link piece. Um, if you have not, again, if you have not signed up for our weekly e-newsletter, please go online. Uh, it just is a quick filling out the information um, to receive it. You submit your, your email address, uh, it automatically gets added. Uh, we have continued to see increase in folks uh, who subscribe to the newsletter. And then every Friday afternoon, sometime typically between 4 and 6 p.m., um, you have the opportunity to see um, the newsletter that we send out. And again, each week, you know, when we do the newsletter, I include a letter um, you know, about what's going on in the district, um, what else is taking place. Mrs. Wilson includes um, some of the highlights of events and activities that are going on, uh, as well as uh, anything new um, that you may need to know, or as Mrs. Holmgren talked about, uh, additional items, you know, that are being shared through uh, within the district. And I just reached over, thank you, Mr. Bart, uh, an additional question that just came through online um, uh, to go in. All right. So uh, I'm, another question that came in ahead of time, I'm hearing a lot about security or about the security vestibules that are planned for our schools in the upcoming bond referendum plans. What is the benefit of the vestibules and why reconfigure all of the offices as well? Um, so good question. Thank you for the question. Uh, we are currently planning a bond referendum for Tuesday, October the 2nd of 2018. Uh, one of the challenges is that the average age of our buildings is about 50 years old. There are infrastructure items and, and issues that must be addressed um, as a full scale as the district. Um, if you have not had the opportunity to come out, um, we've done about 16 or 17 community conversations uh, regarding this topic during the course of the year. Um, we have, I think there are 12, 11 or 12 that are still scheduled. Uh, if you go on the district website, there's a button about a halfway down the, the, the main page uh, that says Cherry Hill 2020. If you click on that button, uh, there's a calendar um, that you can open that will identify when the additional uh, community conversations will take place. But I, I encourage you to come out and, and uh, join me in discussion about the work that needs to be done uh, within our district. Um, so specifically about the security vestibules, um, we used Barclay as a model um, in the district. We selected Barclay um, about a year ago, um, you know, to set up a security vestibule. The desire to uh, put security vestibules in our in our buildings throughout the district uh, has been an ongoing discussion, honestly, that reaches back about five years. Uh, and the goal for the installation of security vestibules in our other buildings, in all of our buildings, uh, is to help to limit access 
um, to the school, right? Safety and security is all of our responsibility, right? It becomes a human factor about helping to enhance the security of the building and the safety of the children that are in the building. The installation of the security vestibule, like we did over at Barclay, uh, requires electronic access into the building. Uh, any visitors, you know, must speak through a video phone, uh, provide specific information, and again, you've seen our, our enhanced security protocols. If it is a parent, you must know your child's student identification number. You must have photo ID in order to gain access to the building. Um, if it's somebody else from the outside, they will not be granted access to the building unless they have a pre-established meeting. Once you enter into the security vestibule, there are a couple of options. In order to get into the main office, you must be buzzed in. There's electronic access to the or in order to access the main office or to access the, the regular part of the building. Same thing. That's what creates this secure vestibule that's there. If a parent or a family member just has to drop off an item, lunch, gym clothes, something like that, there's a sliding window uh, in which you can be dropped off or you can just be left in the vestibule to go, to go in. But it's about providing a secure environment uh, in which we ask the public to, to access um, the building. Not all of the security vestibules will require reconfiguration of offices. Some of them will, however. When our schools were designed back in the 1940s and 50s and 60s, the layout of schools and the delivery instruction looked dramatically different uh, compared to how it looks today. The organization of the buildings was dramatically different back then than it is today. There are different realities and different needs based on being in 2018 versus being in the 1940s, 50s, or 60s. So one of the things is we create these secure vestibules for folks to access is we want them to, to we want the um, access to go directly into an office space, right? So again, controlled access into the building. The office space needs to be reconfigured. That provides us with the environment, again, to help to provide the security uh, and the safety in the building. And in some of the buildings, when we end up reconfiguring offices, also allows us to create additional small group instruction rooms because, again, the way that we deliver instruction and the needs of our children looks different today than it did when these buildings were designed. Uh, the next question that came through is, will tonight's community conversation on safety and security be rescheduled and if it's, if it's canceled because of bad weather? <coughs> Excuse me. And so we have not yet made a decision about events tonight. Again, as I look to my left, uh, I see the snow that is coming down on the outside. Um, sometime prior to 2 p.m. this afternoon, hopefully by 1.30ish, uh, we'll make a formal decision as a district and we will announce whether or not after school and evening events have been canceled. Uh, if tonight's security conversation is canceled, we will look at the calendar about rescheduling it. The earliest that it could be rescheduled at this point would be the week of April the 9th, uh, which is the week after spring break. Uh, but we will put information out and share information uh, about that. A question that came through through our, our YouTube channel, somebody that's watching online. And again, thank you for submitting your question as you watch. Uh, please explain why Cherry Hill is not joining other school districts and municipalities in a lawsuit against the New Jersey Department of Education regarding fair funding. If they have legal standing, how do we do not? So one of the discussions we have quite a bit is about the funding of our school district. Um, Cherry Hill Public Schools are dramatically underfunded when it comes to the state funding that we should receive from the state of New Jersey through the New Jersey Department of Education. In fact, last Thursday, the state funding figures were released by the Department of Ed. Um, Cherry Hill, as a district, received an increase of about $596,000 to our funding compared to what we received in funding last year. Last July, we also received an additional million dollars to what initially had been allocated to us. So at, from March of 2017 to March of 2018, as a school district, we've received about $1.6 million in additional funding. But we are still dramatically underfunded, somewhere in the neighborhood at this point, probably of about $12 million a year that we should receive from the state that we do not receive from the state. There's been an incredible grassroots effort in Cherry Hill through the Cherry Hill Fair Funding Committee to address this issue with our legislators um, and with the elected officials and with the Department of Ed about how the impact uh, affects us in our school district, affects our children, uh, and affects our school system. There was a lawsuit that was filed last year by a group of school districts sued the state uh, because they were, they were underfunded. Um, we had a discussion last year as a, as a school district uh, and with the Board of Education, and we have been advised that we have no legal standing to sue the state. Uh, the lawsuit last year was dismissed. Um, there's a lawsuit that's taking place this year as well. And again, we have been invited to join the lawsuit. Um, there is a cost that's associated that in some ways is nominal, but the discussion that we have continued to have is what is the value of joining the lawsuit for what the impact is. 
we've tried to work with our legislators, continue to work with our legislators, but up to this point, the determination has been made not to join the lawsuit because, again, we do not believe that we have standing, which means we do not believe that we can legally sue the state and, and ultimately win uh, in, what, in, in what takes place. Um, so the long and short the, is that is the reason that we have not joined the lawsuit uh, at this time. As a school district, we are attractive to other school districts that have filed a lawsuit. We would be one of the largest school districts that would be involved um, if we were to join the lawsuit uh, in terms of what's there. Uh, so that's where, where that comes from. Um, if you have not been involved in Cherry Hill Fair funding, I encourage you to look at their website. You can Google it, uh, Cherry Hill Fair funding. Uh, and find out about the efforts, you know, through the Zone PTA uh, and through folks in the community, um, steps that they have been taking um, to address um, fair funding in our district. The Board of Education at our board meeting last Tuesday evening on March the 13th adopted a resolution, a formal resolution, um, you know, requesting um, that the underfunding of our school district be addressed by our legislators and by the Department of Ed. The Board of Education also adopted uh, a similar resolution uh, in February of 2017, and we will continue to, um, you know, we will continue to to maintain a focus. We sent letters and the certified re resolution to the governor, to our elected officials, and to the Department of Ed, again requesting that they address this fair funding. If you follow along in the press, there's been a lot of uh, articles in the last week or so um, that have addressed the fair funding issue. In fact, Cherry Hill has been named a number of times uh, as a school district that is underfunded and a dramatic impact. That it, has, that it has had upon us. So please, as a community, get involved. All of us working together, the Board of Education, the school district, the families, and the community to address our legislators and to address the state will help the message continue to be carried forward. Uh, so thank you for submitting that question. A couple of other things as we come here uh, to the end of March. Oh, the other thing about fair funding. There's a fair funding committee meeting that takes place this Thursday night at 6 p.m here at the Malberg Administration Building. Thank you, Mrs. Wilson, uh, for the reminder. If you have not attended a fair funding meeting in the past, it is open to anybody that would like to come. 6 p.m. in the boardroom here at the Malberg Administration Building this Thursday evening, which is March the 22nd. So I encourage you, if you can make it, come out. Join the folks that are involved. Carry the message back into the community uh, as well. Some additional things that are going on. Um, if you have not had the opportunity to see Phantom of the Opera, uh, Phantom of the Opera opened at High School West last weekend. We'll continue in their production this weekend. An incredible show. I hope that, that many, many of you uh, had a chance as well to see the, the Music Man over at High School, we, High School East. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed the performance. Um, I really do enjoy you know, to see our children perform. Uh, the middle school musicals are coming up as well. I believe the tickets uh, for Annie have been posted. Um, so we're looking forward to the other two middle schools, the, all three middle schools, uh, the productions that are upcoming. Spring sports are in full swing. Again, as we look out and see the snow uh, outside, they've had some challenges with practices and competitions. Please make sure you get out and support our kids. Um, again, as we, as, we, as we are together uh, today, today is March the 20th. There are literally three months of school left. Um, the next three months are going to go by dramatically, dramatically quickly. Uh, so I encourage you to continue to be involved. And please remember that safety and security, again, is all of our responsibility. It's a discussion that I hope people continue to have. It's a discussion that I encourage all of you to have with your children at home and to do it in an age-appropriate manner. If you have questions about how to address topics, contact the school. Go on our website. You can always go on the district website and find additional information. But if you're not sure about what to say, how to say it, contact your child's guidance counselor. Contact your child's principal to go through. Uh, you know that I always like to share my little snacks and my lunch. Um, I do have my yogurt and, and my chia seeds and my almonds. Um, but I really have been into the citrus over the last couple of weeks, especially with the way the weather is. I think the citrus helps us out. And my old staples, I have my carrot, my, my cauliflower, uh, and my celery. Um, and just a couple of books um, that I'm going through at this time. I don't recall whether I shared this last time. I think I did last month. Uh, Kay and Adley Find Their Voice. Uh, it's a new book that, is, that has come out. Uh, Russ Qualia, who we work with in the district, uh, it's a new piece that he and his daughter actually wrote. Um, as Mrs. Cohen, my administrative assistant, uh, and I are going out and reading to, to children uh, during American, um, during Dr. Seuss's birthday, uh, Mrs. Cohen read this to a lot of classes. So again, I encourage you to uh, pick up a copy. Uh, and then two other books. Uh, one that I picked up, Tuck Everlasting, um, that I believe we use in, in our middle school. Uh, an incredible read, has an incredible message for children and for adults. Um, it's a rel it's a, it, it flows, but it's very thought-provoking. Um, and especially with some of the challenges that we've continued to deal with as a community um, and as a country, I encourage you to pick up Tuck Everlasting. And then an adult one, 
to go through for, for grown-ups. Bill Bryson. I don't know whether you've picked up any of Bill Bryson stuff in the past. Neither here nor there. Travels in Europe. Uh, again, takes you to a different place. Um, his style of writing, very conversational, thought-provoking, at times humorous, um, you know, and, and can really make you uh, can really make you think. Uh, and again, folks, as you as you are involved in our school district, I hope folks continue to come out to our meetings. One of the things I ask of everyone, especially adults, is that I encourage you to think be think about the words that you choose and think about what the impact of those words will be. Our children, our students, the children in our community watch what we do and they watch how we behave and how we handle ourselves as, as adults. Please be engaged, please be involved, but please remember how you choose your words. Kindness matters, nice matters. The better that we can do to develop our relationships and to interact with one another in a positive manner, the much better we will be as a society. So again, uh, as I asked at the beginning of the, of the, of the time that we spent today, um, please keep the folks in Great Mills High School uh, and in that community in your mind um, with what is going on. Send a happy thought, a positive thought. Safety and security, it's all of our responsibility. Thank you for joining me today. Think warm thoughts.